All right, now that the breader runs, and I know that this thing works, uh, here is a video on a cheap way to make a car intake manifold work with a Vortec truck engine and move the alternator. Uh, did you have to use a car water pump? Um, but it saved four inches, I think, of clearance for the hood on the top side, and then also another three inches on the bottom when I did the uh, F-Body LS1 pan. No fuel leaks, no vacuum leaks, even though it was sort of a cob deal, and everything does fit under the hood. The, the air intake was actually the highest part. Able to do this cheap, keeping the truck injectors and buying this cheap throttle body on uh, Amazon. It uses all the truck sensors and injectors and everything and the truck wiring harness I had to lengthen the wires for one sensor uh run this car water pump uh modify the truck accessories to change the alternator from like way up here to down here um but really it's pretty simple so like i said this thing's a little too tall as is so this uh Low RPM torque truck intake uh, ain't going to work. This deep motor stuff is actually a nice little setup. I already test fit these brackets on the LS2 manifold. They fit perfect. I have to do some homework and see if LS2 injectors are short like truck injectors. Because it seems to fit pretty good. Come on. Okay, so here's a little better look at the fuel injectors that I talked about on the last video. Um, when uh, you pop them out of the truck fuel rails, this is what you get. You get a big injector O-ring on the top and then a smaller one on the bottom. So what I did to make these work without having to buy spacers or anything to make these uh, 200,000 inch shorter truck injectors work on the LS2 rail and manifold uh, was I took a new injector O-ring for the top. Put the new injector o-ring on the top here take the old top injector o-ring which is thicker than the bottom one and then stick that on the bottom and what that does is it gives you a seal um, in here it holds the injector up a little bit which is that 200 thou that you need the plastic cap in the end bottoms out inside the id of the intake itself um, so it's positively captured and there's no issue there uh, with, you know, I'm not worried about a safety problem having the injectors pop out or anything because they're not adequately captured. I think that would be totally fine. All this O-ring right here does is to seal off a vacuum leak because uh, if it didn't seal off well, you'd have a vacuum leak there uh, and keep crud out of the intake manifold. The fuel pressure is held in by this top O-ring which, uh, you know, is the factory design. It's it's still a factory size O-ring going factory size hole and, the, you know, the factory injector itself. So there should be zero issues there with fuel pressure. So here's another look at it installed. That injector O-ring is totally good there. You can kind of see the seal that you're getting from that other one. And this plastic cap is bottomed right out on the intake itself. So should be zero issues. The other thing that's really nice about doing it this way is you don't have to change your connectors for the injectors themselves. They'll plug right into the truck harness that you already got from the junkyard. This is the map sensor from the truck. Goes right in the LS2 intake. No problemo. Um, this is that cheap eBay 92 millimeter throttle body that was like 46 bucks or something. Um, and it comes with no sensors. But that's fine anyway, because I didn't want cheap Chinese sensors. Uh, I wanted the factory ones that came with the truck. So this is the truck IAC and the truck TPS. Uh, go in there, no problems. Everything seems to work fine. And I'm pretty happy with the final product here. I like the fact that all the truck electrical connections are going to click right in. Zero screwing around. Um, there's no adapters for the fuel injectors from a physical standpoint. Um, to get the uh, the length right or anything with this four bolt intake this uh, ebay throttle body bolts right on no adapter or anything okay so i think this will work the truck throttle bracket sits on the truck intake manifold like this but what i'm going to do is flip it like this to use the intake bolts for the ls2 make a cut across there and then flip the part where the cable goes through here and re-weld it 
Yeah, I want to show this uh, throttle bracket modification a little bit better. So this is the truck throttle bracket that I cut apart and welded back together. Um, it had another tab coming off the end here. And uh, so I just zipped it right across here. This cut is the same cut as this part here. Flipped it around so that the, th the gas pedal and then also the cruise control would still be in the right orientation for the throttle body itself. Got that figured out, had to elongate this hole in order to get the bolt spacing correct for the LS2 intake, which never came with a cable throttle. And uh, it was pretty easy. I'm gonna throw a little gusset on here um, just to be safe, but uh, that looks like that'll be fine too. And it's a uh, free fitty, that's my favorite. Alright, got the LS2 intake all finished off beautifully ugly. Cable throttle, ready to go with all the truck stuff. I ended up buying two of those crossover kits. So the one that I had in the front originally, I put in the back. And then in the front here, I bought another kit. And this is the one that has the barb. I ended up buying a 90 for it, uh, so I could run it to the coolant tank that way. So I tried to figure out a way to make this work, but it ain't happening. Here's my AC's Delco's LS1 water pump. Give us the clearance we need. Old bandsaw at work here. Worked pretty nice to hack this thing up. Uh, so the whole idea is to take the alternator that was too high, move it from the spot that was here, flip it over. So here's a little bracket machine to work. It's a piece of uh, half inch aluminum with 250 thou milled off the back side in order to get the spacing right. And the other thing you got to do is flatten down here. There's a rib that goes all the way across. You can see I ground the piss out of it. That's just to make sure that everything is nice and square. So everything that I ground is a low spot and the cast flat here where the bolt goes through uh, is what's keeping everything square now. Got to throw a nut on the back side of this, but uh, that is how we keep the alternator nice and low, just like the intake itself. That should give me the hood clearance I need. So that gives me an alternator, a water pump, plus one water pump with the spacers all lined up. But look at this uh, tensioner pulley. Apparently I have to mill probably 750 off the back of those since I have a 750 uh, spacer for the water pump. I have to get an exact measurement and then take care of that at work. Well, 95 inches fits a lot better. So uh, that kind of puts me right in the middle of the tensioner here. You can see I marked the two spots. Uh, well, my buddy had a spare harness from a truck that got scrapped. So uh, it actually had the cam position sensor cut off. I got to lengthen mine because the truck setup doesn't fit <coughs> with the way I ran the wiring for the car intake. So uh, rather than doing two splices, I'm just going to do one splice. And I grabbed, this is actually a crankshaft position sensor, but it's exactly the same, exactly the same plug. So it's good to go. As long as I get my uh, colors right, putting it together, should be no issue. So I just took a measurement of these. And the truck one is about 10 and a half inches, where the uh, LS2 is about six. So you're getting a good four inches there. And then for the oil pans, the F-body pan is five and a half, and the truck one is eight and a half deep. So you're saving another three inches there. So there you go. For about 500 bucks, you get four inches more hood clearance with an OEM-style intake and not one of those garbage China intakes that uh, kill all your bottom end. These are still a really nice power band all the way through. And for another 125, 150, you can do an F-body oil pan, save another three inches of ground clearance, and let's see, that's a little over seven total. So you can go from about 33 inches high to 25 or 26, basically. Uh, a lot easier to fit it in the car that way. I've got a video on the F-body oil pan, too, so I'll post a link to that here.